Hello, all of you wonderful creative people out there. I'm Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and welcome to my book art studio in Windy Wales. Today, I have a video that's going to be about altered book basics. Pretty much just a straight up Q&A. Because I've been teaching and making book arts for years. And I get the same six or seven questions over and over. So I know that a lot of you may be curious about this stuff. I also know that you are all at different skill levels. And what is glaringly obvious to some of you may be a total mystery to others. So what I've done is there's text below this video. And if you're on a phone, you may have to press some arrows and mess around to find it. But there is text. And I've added there a bullet list of the questions that I'm answering today and the timestamp of about where you can find it. So if you want to skip forward in the video to what you're really curious about, then just you just go on ahead. We will see you when we get there. I also know that some of the techniques I'm going to talk about today are a lot. And I've already made longer detailed videos in the past about some of these harder, more complicated techniques. So today I'm just going to touch on things and introduce them to you. But if you're interested in, like I said, detailed step-by-step -step tutorials, there are links to those as well in the text below here. Let's go. Question number one, what is an altered book? People have been transforming books for centuries. Uh, today, the most common types are something called book surgery, which is really hard. Paper folding, uh, de livre d'artiste, and what I work in, which is sometimes called a glue book. And that is because you are taking a book and you're basically making it into a series of canvases onto which you can then glue paper ephemera. Now, you can use this as a personal scrapbook. You can also uh, do what I have here, which is to make it into a series of collage. That's what we're going to look at today. But first, first, first I have question number two, which is the big existential book arts question. How do I get past the fear, the reluctance, and the guilt of cutting up a book in the first place? Now, there is a reason why this is such a persistent question. There's something essentially wrong about destroying a book. But here's what you have to ask yourself. Just because you're tearing out pages and cutting and gluing, are you destroying a book? Or are you making something else? Because I can tell you that almost all of the books that you see today in a thrift store or charity shop flea market, they are destined to be pulped and recycled. They just are. Ask yourself when you see a book, do I think that someone is actually going to read this book and love it? And if the answer is yes, then don't, don't alter it. Don't mess with it. If the answer is probably not, it's still going to be sitting on the shelf in four years, then you can take that. You have permission to take that book and transform it into something that will be loved and cherished. You are not destroying it. You are giving it a new life. And I want to show you an example of kind of what I mean. I bought this job lot of books to uh, online to alter. I, I love the size. I love the shape. They're nice and thin. And uh, so I had every intention of messing with these. But then I opened them up 
and they had these beautiful drawings. These are not valuable plates. These are not engravings. And I thought to myself, don't be so emotional. Just alter the darn book. And I couldn't. I just couldn't make myself do it. So here they are on my shelf. However, I found this book. And this is actually the next book that I'm going to be altering in my studio. It is called Hydrodynamics and Vector Field Theory. Uh -huh. It's from 1963. So here's the deal. I'm pretty sure hydrodynamics has changed and advanced a lot since 1963. So I don't think anybody really needs this as a textbook. I'm pretty sure no one's going to read it for the fun of it. And if it was to be used, it would be for historical context. And you know what? No, 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 no. Nobody's going to read this book. So I now have permission to take it and to make it into something beautiful that will be loved. I'm giving it another life. So pretty much what I'm saying is you got to let the book talk to you. There. Next question. How do I find the right book to alter? Well, trial and error. I've been doing this for years and I still sometimes get it wrong. It's just the vagaries of bookbinding. I do have a longer video on this question specifically. It talks about uh, and, sh and shows examples of looking at different bindings, different spines, different weights of paper. Uh, so if this is your question, I think that if you have a look at that video, there is a link in the text. If you have a look at that video, it will shorten the learning curve. The short answer, however, is you want a book that has a sound yet flexible binding. Here is a beautiful book. It's old, but the binding is surprisingly sound. But look at this. And the paper's beautiful too. But look at this. You know what I can tell you right now from, from the way it's curving over? No amount of gluing in the world is ever going to make this lie flat enough for a layout. So I'm just going to admire this one. I'm not going to cut it up. Here we have this book on hydrodynamics. And you can see that the binding is very sound. And it does already... It wants to lie flat. So that's why I just grabbed this. It was 99p. I couldn't just leave it there. It's perfect. I, uh, I know my style is to work with slender books in the first place. We're going to be talking about tearing out your pages. And if you choose a really thick book, you're going to have to remove a boatload of pages. This is going to weaken your spine and your binding. There are some people who make beautiful, thick, altered books. I have no idea how they do it. So if I'm at a, a charity shop or a yard sale, I am looking for thin, slender books. That means I have to remove, remove fewer pages from the get-go. Do I need to tear pages out of my book before I alter it? Again, I choose a thin book so I don't have to tear out many, but yeah, you probably should remove at least a few because you're going to be adding pockets and paper ephemera and your book is going to get chunky and bulk up. This will be a, a strain on the, the spine. So go ahead and take out a few pages. Uh, the easiest way to do this, I mean, you can just go and tear out pages here and there. I've done it. It does the job. But you are going to get a prettier, more consistent result if you tear out pages along the signature. Now, a signature is just, it's just a group of pages in a book. 
where it's sewn. There are two kinds of book bindings, basically. There is a glued binding. I don't really recommend that you use those for altered books. Instead, look for one that's sewn, and you can tell because it will have stitching and thread. So find your sewn binding. Then flip through your pages. And the book is made up of lots of groups of pages. And these groups of pages are called signatures. In the center of each group of page, the center of your signature is where the stitching is. Okay. And you can tell where that is because when you kind of pull it up like this, you can see that this is just, this is actually one, one page, just like that. Okay. So that's the center of your signature. Remove one page. I am going to remove two pages from each signature. Do not even throw, think of throwing this paper away because um, you're going to be using this in other projects. Free art supplies. Okay. Now I'm going to move to the next signature. Okay, That's not it. That's not it. Uh, there, that's it. And I'm going to remove two more pages. I may want to remove more, but it's better to tear out fewer as you go and then adjust than to tear out too many. Then you're, you're just, you're toast. So I'm going to go throughout the book, find each signature and tear out two pages. And then when I've done that, I can have a look at how the book is feeling, what the heft is like, what the balance is like. And if I need to go back, I can and remove one more page from each signature. I rarely remove more than three pages from a signature. But again, you kind of have to listen to the book. Trial and error. Also, I have a longer video about this. The link is in the text. The next two questions go together. What kind of glue do I use and how do I use it to make really perfect flat pages? I use an acrylic gel medium. Now, this is Liquitex. I also like Golden. It has a lot of slip to it and it's very easy to use a brush to make a, a nice thin um, layer that's, that's uniform on your page. And so it makes a nice clean uh, adhesive. You can also use PVA, that's a white craft glue, or Mod Podge is popular. When I use a white craft glue, I add a little bit of water and mix it really well. That gives it more slip. Another thing that you might want to do is just paint water onto your paper before you add your adhesive. This is because some, uh, especially old paper, vintage paper can be kind of thirsty. And this way you're, you're watering it a little bit so it doesn't just suck up all of the moisture from your, your glue and make it gummy. I'm usually going to glue three, four, or five pages together to make my little canvas here, my substrate. It really depends on the, the weight of the paper and your style. I've put down a little bit of, this is grease proof paper. It's like a parchment. You could use wax paper, deli paper. And you wanna do this on whatever side you're gluing down to because if you don't, it is super easy to glue your sections to each other. I know I found out the hard way. So let's look at this. You know, when I started teaching book arts, I thought that the most common question I was going to get would be about inspiration or vision, but it's not. By far the question that I get the most is how do you get your pages so darn flat? 
So there you go. I have put a very thin but very even layer of my medium here. Pull the page down and press it flat. Go ahead and pull the book up so that you're not stretching the spine. Okay, that's you really want to lean into that. Now you want to take a straight edge. It could be a bone folder, it could be a ruler, or even a, a butter knife, the, the flat side of a butter knife. This is a kind of a paint stirrer spatula thing that I got at the hardware store for about 60 pence. So really cheap and I use it all the time. In doing this, you are flattening out the glue between the pages even more. So you're making it really even. Just have a look with your eyeballs and make sure you got all your spots. I'm going to put that down, pull the spine over just a little. Really glue it down. Whoopsie. Now, I am going to stop. I always stop after one section and then I weight my book down. Uh, you can use a stack of encyclopedias, some bricks. Uh, one uh, viewer suggested using huge bags of rice in a roasting tin, and you put that on top. So use what you got, improvise, but you want to weight your book down and then wait at least an hour. That's really the secret to getting this, this perfect flat sound piece to work on. It does take time. It's, it's, it's longer than if you just go through the whole book at once, but it really makes for a nice sound structure to work with. You can maybe do two sections if you want, but I always just do one. Okay. What happens if you're working on a book and it collapses on you? How do you mend your spine if it's bust? Now, this is a really, really important lesson in altered bookmaking, and uh, I do not have a longer video already made that corresponds to it, so I am going to slow our roll right down here and do this step by step, because it happens, and it happens a lot. It is just in the nature of altered bookmaking. They're going to get bust. You find your perfect book tear out your pages, glue them together and patiently wait for them to dry. Then you open it up and this happens. Okay, that's pretty dramatic. That doesn't happen often. What is way more likely to happen is that you open up your book and maybe the pages aren't lying as flat as you need them to, so you give it a little bit of <laughs> bend and it snaps happens to me all the time. Okay, don't fret because you can usually do something about it. And I have to tell you that I, ooh, I, I probably have to mend a binding in an altered book two or three times in one book. It's just happens. And you want to do it as much as you can before you start gluing stuff in there. You're going to need some kind of, basically you're making a bandage here. I'm going to use, I like to use mulberry paper. It's very thin, very flexible, and uh, very resilient. You can also use, ta-da, a tea bag, which is surprisingly resilient and tough and flexible. So I do like to use that. Um, you can also use masking tape. I have used washi tape, but if you do use t tape, go ahead and glue it down. Don't rely on the tape without some glue. This is a bit tricky because what you wanna do is take whatever you're using for your bandage and add plenty 
of adhesive to it. Okay. Now this is really messy. But I'm going to pick it up. And now this is the tricky part. It gets better as you practice, so don't worry. Put it down, you know, pretty much halfway between your page, the sides of your pages and the spine. But don't just throw it together. Okay, now lift this guy up. Because this hinge is crucial. Get this side down in there into the seam. Do not pull it tight. You need some give. Okay. So now you've got the give. Go ahead and put it down on the other half of your layout. Again, we're going to make sure we've got that give there. Now, weight it and let it dry. This I will probably leave for three or four hours overnight if I have time. Now let's look at trying to use the masking tape. Let's go mad, see if we can do anything with this. Got a length of masking tape, and again, you need to add the glue to it. Don't depend on the tape. Now, I'm putting half of it down on one side. See? Now, I'm going to press these together, make them fit like pieces of a puzzle. Put that tape down. Make sure there's some give there, not too tight. And then add it to the other side. Yeah. See, that's a pretty desperate. It's, it's not going to look great, but... What it could do is buy you enough time that you can try something else. That's going to hold together just enough that if I was to put something over the whole, the whole canvas thingy here, the whole pages, it would hold together, which is what I've done here. I've taken this handwritten piece of paper and pulled it all the way across both sides of the layout. This does not always work. It really depends on the binding of the book. And the only thing that you can do is trial and error. Take notes. Now you can see that there is some give there. It's not pulled really, really, really tight. I've done the same thing here. And you can even see where I've made sure that that went into the middle there, not pulled really tight. Now, this is a book that I'm, the newest altered book that I'm working on, and you can actually see that I thought I was finished. I had already done some stenciling over here and glued in some papers, and then the binding on the back gave way. That's pretty scary. But keep your head, keep your calm. I took a bit of mulberry paper, and I had to actually trim it to this completely asymmetrical, weird shape so that it wouldn't interfere with the pieces that I had already put down and could not move. So what? That's not the end of the world. It looks a little odd, but lean into it. Uh, just, you know, it adds texture and interest to the eye. I love that peeling wallpaper look. And that's what you've just added there while reinforcing your binding. So part of my point here is that you may have to incorporate the tea bag or the tape or whatever you're mending with into your layout, but that's okay. Work with it and make something pretty out of it. The next question I get in every single video I have made in over two years, and it is, do you fix your pages? And the answer is, only if I need to. In this case, I have used a lot of charcoal on both sides of the paper. 
and charcoal, like soft pastels and other soft media, will make a lot of itself. It could contact the other side of the paper and, and mess everything up. So I do fix them. I use a spray fixative. It's just called fixative. This is Winsor Newton, but I usually just use whatever is on offer at the craft store or online. And between you and me and all of us, if I'm making a piece for myself that is for fun, say an art journal or an illustrated journal, just for me, I will use hairspray. It does the job. But in a piece like this, um, I hope it will last a long time and go to a good home and make someone happy. So I do want something that is archival quality. So for my altered books and pieces that I sell, I use a fixative. You just want a very light coat. Do not saturate your page. Just light and you're good to go. Finally, how do I display an altered book? This is a little problematic because you can't really mount it on a wall the way that you would a painting. Instead, the way I display them is I just put them on a counter or a coffee table and they're meant to be a conversation piece. So if you have someone visiting, you can invite them to look through the page. Uh, if you have pockets, they can take things out of the pockets and play with them. And it's just meant to be very pretty and very fun. And people can just look at it like this. There is one thing, though, that I occasionally do, and that is you can buy a plate display. You see, this is uh, a plate display stand that you would put a decorative plate on. And it goes like, like that. So it looks like this when it's displayed. See, it's on the plate display stand. And so you can open it up to different pages on different days. I also sometimes use a mini easel. That's what I have here, a mini easel. So there are ways to display your books. I hope that I have answered all of your questions about altered book basics. If I've missed something out, please let me know in the comments and we will do something about that. If you like altered books and journal arts, I have a monthly newsletter and it has tutorials, free downloads, uh, giveaways, sometimes a little fashion, and other fun stuff. So if you'd like to join, the link is below this video. I would be really grateful. I also post on YouTube every Friday, so please subscribe to my channel, especially if you are interested in that upcoming Collage Basics series. I think that will be July. In the meantime, all of these books are available in my online shop. And even if you're not shopping, you can see lots of still photos there that maybe will give you some ideas and inspiration for your own work. Until later, I hope everybody has a creative weekend. Happy making.